Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Saya Ibu Andi dari KSEC Gerai 212 Ciawi. Alhamdulillah saya sudah bisa diterima dalam mengenalkan produk-produk UMKM. ini bibit aha, pangsit aha, e, apa namanya ikan suwir kabita dan produk-produk yang unggulannya seperti ini, gajah detergen, cair dan e, minuman dari asal juga minuman dari e, alkali adalah semacam pokari swet untuk menambah ion. Alhamdulillah semuanya ini e, sudah diterima di untuk untuk dijual di sini di gerai 212 KS KSC Awi. Semoga kedepannya 212 akan bertambah lagi gerai-gerai yang lain dan menambahkan apa namanya uh, sebagai uh, sarana dakwah secara ekonomi buat umat Islam uh, membuat semuanya buat umat Islam menjadi maju dalam ekonomi. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Um, I'm not a speaker. I'm going to be the first to tell you that. I'm extremely nervous, but inshallah, I'll be okay. <laughs> um, well, I, I come from Michigan. I'm 31 years old, I'm married, um, but I come from a Christian family, but like most of us, converts. Um, my father's side is Catholic, and my mother's side is very conservative Christian Baptist. Um, so me converting was a very big deal for my entire family. However, my mother did come from a very large family, and um, she was the one child out of the six children that uh, maybe rebelled and didn't embrace Christianity. And um, so my mother did raise me quite differently. Um, she raised me to be very open-minded, uh, very liberal politically and religiously, I guess you could say. But I embraced all of her values and morals of thinking, but I never really embraced the way she thought about religion. From a very young age, I actually was very attached to Christianity on my own. Nobody pushed me because my grandparents weren't really around pushing me into Christianity. I just willingly entered into that religion. So I started going to Young Life and Christian camps and um, really trying to get involved in the religion as much as I could. And um, I believe I was about 15 years old. I went to Minnesota and went to Young Life camp. I'm um, not sure if any of you are aware of it, but it's a Christian camp. is amazing, great time. But they have you stand up and in front of about a crowd about this size, and then they have you claim Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I did it, but I did it kind of blindly. I was 15 years old. You're, you don't really, in, you're not really researching as much as you should be. You're kind of just following what people are telling you to believe. You don't really question. And so I went ahead and did that, um, went about my life, and, and always had in my mind um, just kind of what my mother would always be putting in my mind, you know, how can all the children who haven't heard of the gospel, aren't, aren't they going to hell? Is that what they teach you? And so I would be battling this, like, argument within myself and be like, no, I believe in Jesus. But yet my own mom is telling me that, um, you know, how can anybody just tell any, a random person that they're going to hell? And so I never really faced that question. Well, then going um, into college, I... Um, I was went through my freshman year and then my sophomore year. I was always somebody that wanted to like travel and explore the world. Well, I met some Muslim friends and um, some were from Morocco. A friend of mine had um, a the was the uh, son or the grandson of the American Language Center director in Tangier, Morocco, and they were like, "There's this opportunity. Do you want to go teach English?" I was like, "Yes, definitely." Well, I went there. And alhamdulillah, like, I was able to um, live with a Moroccan family. So I did that, and I was like, hey, I want to dress like you're dressing. Can I, you know, wear a scarf? 
So she'd give me a scarf. I wore a scarf. And then I was like, what do you call that? And there'd be an abaya. So then I wore an abaya. So th for three months, I would wake up pre -fajr. I had no idea what I was doing. And I would put my hijab on. I had no idea why. But I would just do it. And I was excited. I was like, oh, it's a new, new dress. So um, I went about, you know, about my time. I had fun in Morocco. It was an awesome experience. But I never questioned anything they did. I never, because they spoke Arabic, I spoke English. Like, and so I started learning a little bit of Moroccan Arabic, but you can't communicate. So awesome experience. Came home, went about you know, my life. I graduated college. I then worked at a bank. Um, here's where the irony comes in. Because I still, even though I lived in a Muslim country, I still had no idea about Islam. Like I had no idea. But yeah, I worked at a bank, and I was dealing with interest on a day-to-day -day basis, and something told me to quit. Something within me was like, this is not right. I'm not supposed to be doing this. I, I, obviously, now I know what it was, but at the time, I could not explain it. And I just knew I was not doing what I was supposed to be doing. I was on the wrong path. So I've always wanted to be a photographer. I needed to be in a creative field. So I quit everything, dropped everything, and I moved to Florida and went to photography school. At the same time, I uh, decided to uh, join Project Downtown and Nasir. <laughs> I met Nasir over there from Orlando. Um, he's an overcomer, mashallah. Um, so I met tons of Muslim friends, one of them being Nadine. She runs Naduna, and actually Zainab is the vice president of Naduna, so mashallah. Um, Nadine's an awesome friend, and um, I approached her at this is the same time I started photography school. Um, at that time, uh, they asked me to do a, an assignment, and I would be able to do a documentary on my choice. I, ch I decided to do it on hijab, because I'm like, I lived in Morocco, I have wore this for three months, but yeah, I still have no clue why they wear it. And um, so I asked Nadine, I was like, can I please interview you? And um, she's like, absolutely. So we went ahead, I did an interview. I asked her these questions that I was like, just generic questions that I get all the time. You know, like, why do you wear it? Do people judge you? Is it hot? You know, like, whatever. <laughs> and like, I got the question in Georgia a couple weeks ago. <laughs> um, so like, obviously, like, ignorant questions, you know, because I had no idea what I was talking about. And so when she started speaking to me, she opened up my eyes and she was like, you're Christian, right? I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, you know, it's in the Bible that it says, it's in Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6, that you were supposed to wear the hijab. I was like, really? So then she just kept opening up my eyes and this is, you know, the thing is about Islam, the reason why I, the beauty of it and why I love it so much is it's such a feminist religion. And, then I, and I grew up as like the biggest feminist. And I was like, you know, always like fighting like for women's rights and everything. But like what you end up learning is like, that's what Islam did. Islam gave rights to women. And so that's what I loved about it. And so I started listening to her and you get this other point of view that you never thought of. You think that, you know, um, Muslim women that they don't really have a career and maybe they're they just all they're there for their husbands and all these stereotypes that are out there they really are there and she opened up my eyes and she's like just look around and look at the magazine aisle nothing is sold without a woman's body being put next to it and I remember her saying she's like you can't even sell a bag of chips without having a naked woman next to it and I'm like yeah like that's not feminism that's, a, that's oppression. Like, I've been living in an oppressed society, and yet I don't even know it. Like, why do we have to feel so self-conscious about our bodies all the time? And so I really started thinking about it. I went home. I looked up her verse, the verse in the Bible. I was like, wow, this is really there. And then from there, I got so interested, and I decided to look in the Quran and what the Quran said about the hijab. And then surprisingly, when I read the Bible's verse about hijab, it was actually very demeaning for women. I don't know if many of you have read it, but it actually says that if you don't wear the hijab, you're supposed to shave your head in shame. And that seemed to me a very demeaning way. But yet the Quran talks how beautiful the woman is, that I should be covered. And so that's what I started just looking at things differently. 
So then I just was so interested. Every, I couldn't, I couldn't like get my hands off of learning about Islam. So then I would read it, you know, books and read the Quran. I'd watch YouTube videos. Like Yusuf Esses was one of my favorites. So I would just like look at all his YouTube videos. And, and um, I did this for about like three months. But then I knew I was going to become Muslim. So then I'm like, I'm not ready to take my Shahada, but I'm ready to put my hijab on. So I actually put the hijab on before I took my Shahada. And I didn't put it on full time. Traveled to New York and I decided to put it on just because I felt comfortable. I felt like I would blend in, like I wouldn't stand out. But then I remember flying back and I remember going to class. And I remember just being so nervous. And alhamdulillah, like I got through it and everybody, you have to answer to everybody. Why, why are you wearing that? Because you come in and you're not wearing it. And I know it's minuscule now, but alhamdulillah, I'm so proud to wear my hijab now. But at the time, it's so hard. You know, you have to explain to everybody. And I did it, but it took so much strength. Um, and then three months later, I, knew, I just kept researching and researching. And I'm like, yes, this is the religion for me. I'm ready to do this. And I remember being alone. And... Um, it was July uh, 29th, 2011. It was the Friday before Ramadan at Juma. I was going to Juma and everything, but yeah, I still wasn't Muslim, but I remember sitting this, uh, next to this lady and she said, I think you should convert before Ramadan starts. There'd be so many blessings. And so I thought about it and thought about it and then I got in my car and then I was like, yes, this is what I want to do, I'm ready. So I went and grabbed the first woman I could find, and I was like, I want to take my shahada. And um, so she went and grabbed the first brother, and we went and I took it. And just a sense of peace just came over me when I took my shahada. Um, and since then, it's been, it's been a journey. It's definitely been a journey. Um, I believe I was really on the wrong path right away. I was not really praying. You know, no one's there to guide you. Like, you're trying to do things on your own. You're like, I don't know how to pray. I'm going to watch a YouTube video and try. So then you just, like, do the best you can. And then, like, I'm living, I'm supporting myself living in an apartment alone. So I'm like, okay, well, the Quran says to fast from sunrise. So I'm going on the chart, and I start, like, at the sunrise time, not the fajr. So it's like, you do things wrong, but you, like, do the best you can, you know? And um, alhamdulillah, like, my family, uh, my mom took it pretty hard, um, she, which was actually kind of the irony of it. She had taught me my whole life to be open-minded and accept everybody. And it was so hard for her to accept this. Um, and I believe I had it very easy compared to a lot of converts. Some converts, they are disowned by their families. And, but... Um, my mother, alhamdulillah, after a while, she accepted it, but she would always say, you know, why do you have to wear the hijab? Can't you just take that off? And so I would, and you go through this struggle, even though this is kind of what led me to Islam, the hijab, is I would take it off for my mom. I'd go home to Michigan and I'd take it off. And so you feel like this battle. You're like, I'm trying to be Muslim, but I'm trying to please my family. And so it's just this struggle. Um, but alhamdulillah, like my family now accepts everything and I believe I'm on the right path. I'm praying five times a day now, so I'm still learning, but alhamdulillah, it's my story.